Hello, welcome back. Good morning. We're going to focus on these incredible scenes yesterday at Reading, who saw their League One game with Port Vale abandoned after fans invaded the pitch to protest against the club's owner, Dai Yong. Yeah, we're joined now by Ben Thomas, who hosts the Tilehurst End podcast. Ben, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you would have uh, seen or been around the protests yesterday. What's your reaction to what you saw happen? Um, well, I mean, the fact that I'm on this programme means it's done its job, to be honest with you guys. it's uh, It's been a long uh, few years with this owner. You know, as, as you guys have said already on the programme, we were one kick away from, from the Premier League uh, sort of five, six years ago. And it's been a gradual decline since then, really. And, and you know, we're a very, very patient, uh, largely respectful fan base and, and we've had enough. And, you know, it kind of happened organically yesterday where people felt they needed to take it one step further. And, and in my opinion, it was it was the right thing to do. We, we may well get more EFL sanctions, uh, but my, my kind of message would be it can't be any worse than, than it currently is right now. And we needed to take that action to... Um, you know, to show the footballing world and to show the media that we were desperate to save our club and we need some help to do that. We could see a couple of tennis balls scattering across the pitch there, Ben. Fans have been protesting in various forms for a couple of years at Reading. Why has it now escalated to this level? Well, I think, you know, there's there's been a lot of um, of, of groups that have, have tried to work with the club over the last few years. And, and you know, we have great respect for, for a lot of the employees there, you know, people that have worked there for sort of 20, 30 years who are fans themselves. And, you know, the news this week where we've got players being sold, uh, you know, behind the manager's back, behind the sporting director's back, behind kind of football people's uh, back is, is unacceptable. And, you know, they're, they're, the hierarchy are telling us one thing as fans, but actually doing another. And it's it's got to the point where we feel like there's going to be nothing left. You know, we've we've, we've slowly dripped down the leagues. We're in the basement of, of League One at the moment. And um, really, we, we're, we're desperate, you know, and, and we've had enough. We've been treated poorly as fans for a long time. Staff have been treated horrendously with redundancies. Lost our assistant manager just, you know, a couple of weeks ago to, to redundancies as well. So we, we're in a situation where we have to take more uh, serious action. We have to get all of the eyes of the football world on, on our plight because it, it could happen to any club. You know, we, we know that this river of football is, is full of lost sharks. And unfortunately, we've got the biggest one of the lot at the moment. <laughs> Ben, uh, I'm sure people will be listening to you. Um, I'll be sympathising with the situation, as were some of the fans, I'm sure, in the stadium last night. But what about those people that were disappointed with the way the protest went down and perhaps feeling that that protest could then lead to even further points deductions or getting the trouble even into more trouble? What would you say to those fans? Uh, I, you know, I, I understand that. You know, the, the podcast, we've always tried to... Uh, to appreciate, you know, every fan's point of view. But at this stage, I'd much rather sacrifice 90 minutes of football um, and, and and try and secure a club uh, in, in the years to come. You know, I, I sit with my dad. I've, I've, I've been going with my dad to, to this, this football club for, for almost 30 years. I know I don't look it, but uh, but I have. Um, and I've started taking my son, who's, who's kind of eight, and he's been going for sort of three, four years as well. And I want to make sure that there's a football club for him for his children, you know, for his grandchildren moving forward. And we're, we're into 152nd year, I think, and we've got no guarantees that we're going to make 153rd at the moment. And actually, it's it's tragic. And I, I understand people's frustrations, but this is a time when fans need to come together now and, and really try to be as unified as possible. As with, with anything, you're never going to get consensus from everybody. But, you know, the ultimate situation is everyone has to understand, whether they're a fan of Reading Football Club or, or not, that, that this is a very serious situation for a, a very old football club um, that has had years of, of kind of relatively, uh, you know, simple success. You know, we've been in the Premier League for sort of three years on and off. And actually, we want to guarantee that we've got generations of, of other Reading fans in the local area to be able to support our football clubs. So I do understand that. But... As a, as a piece of action that kind of happened organically yesterday, I think we have to kind of accept that the, the anger is rising, the fear is rising, and the, and the general discontent is, is at an all-time high at this football club. So if nothing changes and Dai Yong remains as the owner of Reading Football Club, where does this end? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a million-dollar question, Chris, to be honest with you. It's, it's very, very difficult at the moment to imagine what our Saturdays, what our Tuesdays would be like without being able to go to the Select Car Leasing Stadium. 
to, to go to, you know, away games. We've got one of the highest averages of, of away attendances at the moment in League One. And that just shows you the strength of feeling where our fans want to get behind the team. In terms of potential buyers coming through, you know, we're, we're led to believe at the moment that Dion wants to asset strip the football club in terms of selling off our, our main assets in players. You know, we've had rumours this week of, of two players that have come through our youth team, uh, our academy, who have both caps in the club on a number of occasions being sold to, to Premier League clubs. Um, and that was done behind, as I said, the, the, the back of the manager and, and, the, and the football director. So in terms of where we go, we, we, we're desperate for a takeover. We're desperate for someone to buy us. So if anyone's watching who wants to buy a football club in a in a relatively okay area, please let us know because we, we would love to do you know business with you. But I mean, the, the unthinkable would be that we, we don't have a club in, in six months' time. And so these, these kind of situations, these kind of protests will, will continue to ramp up in, in different forms. Um, the group cell before we die have been set up to be able to, you know, to work out what to do with the help of the fan base. And they've done a fantastic job so far, as have other fan groups and, and podcasts connected with the club. So the, the time now is really to, to kind of continue to, to come together, to take action, to, to embarrass our owner and, and get him out of our football club, basically. Start warning. Ben, thanks for coming on and speaking to us this morning. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good one.